Good evening and welcome to our program. I'm Elizabeth Golden Pigeon, the Education Program Coordinator. Tonight's program is on financing the adoption of renewable energy technologies, and we have two speakers. Peter Adamczyk is going to tell us about implementing PACE 2.0 in Vermont. Peter is the Energy Finance and Development Manager for VEIC, the Vermont Energy Investment Corporation. Our second speaker will be Ludi Biddle, and she is the Executive Director of NeighborWorks of Western Vermont. And Ludi is going to tell us about NeighborWorks financing for audits, and she's bringing this program to Addison County, so it's really exciting time. If some of you are from towns that are implementing PACE, please feel free to ask questions because we'd like to hear from you. And our program is sponsored by the ACORN Renewable Energy Co-op and the Addison County Regional Planning Commission, as well as additional funding from the Department of Energy. So now, let's welcome Peter. Got my leash. Thank you. Good evening. Um, thanks for all coming out this evening. I look forward to um, answering your questions about PACE. Um, and I do encourage questions. I guess with this format, with the microphones, maybe a little more restraint than usual would be in order. But um, I, I do think it's very useful. If you have a question, probably other people aren't thinking the same thing. So uh, I do encourage you to speak up. Um, so if I could just get a show of hands, how many of you have uh, some sense of what PACE is? Excellent. OK, that's, I, that was my. Um, guess of what the audience was going to be. So I do have a couple introductory slides, but I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. But as we are coming up on town meeting day, and as many towns are preparing to, to vote on PACE, I do think it's useful to just quickly refresh our memories about what, what the fuss is all about. So PACE, Property Assessed Clean Energy, is a financing tool. And um, you could well ask, why do we need yet another financing option? And Part of the answer is because so many of the, of the other programs that have been tried um, have not been successful. Um, there have been almost 200 energy financing programs throughout the United States over the last 25 years. And the participation rate per year has typically been less than one half of 1% per year. So that means a program that could reach 100,000 households, if it reaches 500, it's, it's top of the line. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and they have to do with um, difficulty of getting the message out, uh, poor marketing in some of these programs. Uh, it has to do with people's skepticism about the savings and so on. But again and again and again, people say that one of the main reasons that they don't want to do this is because they're reluctant to risk the money up front. The nature of spending money on energy is you spend um, a fair amount of money, sometimes a lot of money up front, and then you accrue that benefit in lower energy costs over a period of, of years, usually. And a lot of people are very nervous about doing that. And uh, you know, human beings are irrational animals economically and, and in other ways too, but I'm, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. And, um, and what we frequently do is we do nothing. And the cost of doing nothing is substantial and getting higher and higher and higher. So PACE addresses this in ways that I'll describe to you momentarily. Um, the next thing is that financing programs, this is true not just of energy, but um, you could summarize this by saying people who are able to qualify for loans frequently don't need them, and the people who do need the loans are not able to qualify for them. Um, and that's because loans, loan pr lending programs do not take into consideration the energy savings. So if you're investing in your home and you anticipate some substantial energy savings, if you go to a bank to get a loan, they're going to look at your income and your debt and your assets and so on, but they're not going to count the energy savings. That's not part of the equation. Um, and then finally, other than mortgage products, other than using your mortgage or a home equity loan to finance, if you borrow money short term, it's quite difficult to borrow for, for more than perhaps seven years. Even seven years is at the high end for consumer loans. And what happens then is you get what's called negative cash flow. And that means that your loan payments are more than your energy savings. So that what that means is for several years, your losing money. You're out of pocket. You're having to come up with some money from elsewhere to meet the difference between the, the money you're saving on your energy bill and your payments to a bank, for example. Um, and if you have negative cash flow, that means you have to have money from someplace else. And again, that frequently stops people from acting. So let's talk about how PACE works. It is a voluntary mechanism, and it allows property owners to opt in to a special a tax assessment district. Now, what does that mean? Um, Towns already have relationships with the properties in that town. 
the town you live in already sends you a bill, a property tax bill. It already has a lien on your property, and it has a relationship with the building that you live in. If, when you get your property tax bill, it has your name on it and has your address on it. If you sell your house, that bill is no longer yours. It continues to go to that address. And so sometimes people say, why should a town get in the business of banking? Well, this isn't banking because banks lend to people. Um, and if you own a house, the bank says, that's great because that's, that can help me protect myself. I'm going to um, use that house as collateral. If you go to sell the house, the bank's going to say, you have to pay me back in full because I'm about to lose the thing that's protecting me. So banks lend to people. Towns have relationships with the properties. And just as they continue to provide services like plowing the streets and, and you know, um, electric services and so on that, that towns provide and, and municipal utilities provide, um, in the same way, PACE financing can be provided by a town to the residents of that town. The first thing that has to happen is that a vote has to take place and majority of eligible voters in the town have to uh, agree to designate the town as a property assessed clean energy district. Um, having done that, the funds can then be used by property owners who choose to opt in for eligible energy efficiency and renewable investments. Um, in the handout at the back, there's a two or three page document, which I will describe momentarily, that lists the eligible measures. But the short description of it is anything that reduces the cost of energy in your home could be eligible for PACE. Um, the repayment period for a PACE assessment is up to 20 years. Um, I mentioned earlier that it's difficult to get positive cash flow with a short-term loan. If you can borrow money for up to 20 years, it's much easier to get positive cash flow. Now, what does that mean? Let me take a, a real-world example, and, and I'll be going through this later on, but just to summarize it. Um, it's not uncommon at all for a person to do an energy uh, project on their home and save $1,000 a year. Um, if your assessment payment is, for example, $600 a year, then you're $400 a year ahead in year one. So instead of having this situation where you've done the right thing, you've invested in your home, your home is more comfortable, and, and by the way, I'm here to talk about the financial aspect of it, but this is first and foremost about comfort and safety. I myself in my own home did a, a major energy retrofit three years ago. My wife was completely exasperated with this energy geek that she's married to, and she uh, was very annoyed while all the work was going on, and she's the biggest fan in the world now because we used to walk around our house in wool socks and sweatshirts in the winter, and it's now you know a, a lovely place to be in the winter. So um, it's mostly about having a, your home be a nice place to live, but if you can do it and also save money, not seven years from now when you've paid off the loan, but in year one, that's what positive cash flow um, does for you. And the other key characteristic is, just as I said, your property tax doesn't follow you when you sell your house and move, neither does an assessment. The assessment stays with the property. So it, you only pay while you're benefiting from it. So you do energy improvements on your home, you pay your assessments and enjoy your lower energy bills. At the time you sell the house, the buyer uh, takes on the assessment, which is reasonable because they're also taking on the benefit of the energy savings. And if you choose to, it can be paid in full um, at any time as long as it's paid, um, it can be paid without penalty rather, as long as it's paid in full. So if you were selling your house and the buyer said, I love your house and I love the energy bills and I love everything about it and I just don't get this assessment thing, you could renegotiate the sales price and pay off the assessment at, at time of sale. So that doesn't have to be an obstacle to, to doing it. Point to stop and ask if there's any questions. Oh, sorry. If it turns out that you uh, are not in a town that, that has adopted this PACE program, then you're sort of in a waiting game? or That's correct, yeah. Okay. So again, the question was, if your town does not vote to approve a PACE district, that's correct. It is just is not available to you. Okay. It, it only can be done if your town has designated itself as a PACE district. Have any neighboring states adopted a program similar to this? Um, Yes. So the question is, have any st other states done this? Um, 27 states around the country have adopted PACE programs and the District of Columbia. Um, there was a major event that took place a couple of years ago, which I'm going to detail, having to do with the regulator. That, that uh, was a, a major um, uh, stopping point in the development of this. Um, but so right now, 
Uh, Vermont is the, well, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Quite a few states have gone forward. They're in a holding pattern right now for a reason I'll describe momentarily. Okay, so the purpose of this picture is to sort of visually, I, I like to show things visually, is to show how the money flows um, and to uh, try to help people understand the, the way a PACE district works. So uh, it all begins with uh, what I'm calling here financing source. Um, it's where the money comes from. So uh, as you see this upside down funnel effect, you've got a relationship between the financing source and the PACE district. The PACE district is the entity that sends you your property tax bill. Okay? So the town has designated itself as a PACE district and now there are various property owners in the town. Some of them want to opt in, some of them do not. So in my example, three of the five property owners here decide they would like to use PACE financing uh, to invest in energy um, projects for their home. Each one of those property owners makes their own decisions. They might go out and have an energy audit. They might talk to an installer about having a renewable technology. They might do both. And they figure out what work they want to do. They then uh, submit their project to confirm that it is, in fact, eligible measures. It is going to reduce the energy use of their home. And they um, verify that they're eligible, that they have sufficient equity in their home, and they're current on their property taxes, and so on. Once they have um, done that, the town, the PACE district, then uh, reserves the money from the financing source and says, we're going to need this amount of money for each property. So I'd like to stress that this is not a revolving loan fund. This isn't a pile of money waiting for a place to go. This is individual property owners saying, the first one might say, I need $12,000 for my project. The second one might say, I only need six. The third one might say, I need $30,000. Each of those projects will be verified and the money will be reserved for that particular property. So at no time is the town holding the money, paying interest, anything like that. When the work is completed and the property owners have signed off that they're satisfied with the work, the money is dispersed to the contractors that have done the work. Um, if the property owner had any upfront costs, things <coughs> like um, an application fee, uh, if they had to get some permits or something like that, those costs can be rolled into the assessment. So you can be literally no money down on the first day of a PACE assessment. And then the next time you receive a property tax bill, um, you will get a special assessment bill to go along with it. Yes, sir. So will, will, the, will the district, will the money go directly to the property owner or will it go to the, to the person that did the work, the would, entity that does the work? Right, so the question was, would it go to the property owner or to the person who did the work? It would go to the person who did the work. But let, let's say you did some energy efficiency work, you did a, some renewable, and you also had some bills up front, like application fees and so on. Um, each of those contractors, when they completed their work, the property owner would sign off saying, I'm satisfied with the work, and the money would be dispersed directly to the contractor. And at the conclusion of everything, the property owner would receive a check for whatever out-of-pocket out of expenses they'd had. And that would be added to the assessment. Okay. So... Um, Here's where things get interesting. So what happened is there's this regulator called the F Federal Housing Finance Agency, and it is the regulator for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are the two uh, companies which um, buy mortgages on the secondary market. And even today, about 70% of residential mortgages are purchased by Fannie and Freddie. Um, this regulator came out against the idea that PACE was secured by an assessment that was senior or ahead of the mortgage. So to be clear, all assessments are senior to mortgages. So the, the normal precedence is property taxes, then assessments, then mortgage, and then owner's equity. Um, FHFA uh, was against the idea of using this structure with an assessment secured by a senior loan. And the reason was that in a foreclosure, um, so here's the way it works in a, and by the way, I, I always like to share this number because a lot of people don't realize this. Vermont is dead last in the list you want to be dead last in. We are number 50 out of 50 states in foreclosures and have been almost without exception for the last three, four years. Um, so in a foreclosure, the, uh, so in a nor let, me, let me go through a normal sale first. In a normal <coughs> sale, uh, at the time of closing, the property tax due to that day is, is obtained at the closing and that number is paid in order to release the lien and allow the property to be transferred. If there's another assessment, let's call it a wastewater district or something like that, same thing. There's an amount due up to today. Then the bank says, okay, you have to pay the mortgage in full, and then and only then can the property owner um, sell the house and whatever money's left over was their equity. Um, in a tax, in a foreclosure, 
what happens is the um, bank is foreclosing, and so at the closing, the town says property taxes are due, and the mortgage bank says, I'll pay it in order to secure my interest. That money will be added to the mortgage. If there's a senior assessment, I'll pay it and to add it to the mortgage, and then the property's mine. And um, typically, there's no money left at all. So you can see that having a, a lien that sits below the mortgage is a problem, because in a foreclosure, um, it is, um, there's no, there could potentially be no money to pay that. Um, Without getting too much into the weeds here, this is just a quote from Vermont statute, and what it says in effect is an assessment is exactly the same as a tax, exactly the same as a tax. Same extent as taxes, all procedures, all remedies for collection, an assessment is a tax. So what's happened in Vermont is that we've uh, created a new thing, something that's never been before, which is a assessment that is secured by a lien that is below a mortgage. It's after the mortgage. So in a regular sale, um, that doesn't matter because the town still has all the protections. So you're unable to sell your house unless your property taxes are current and your um, assessments are current, even if it's a junior assessment. However, in a foreclosure, um, there could be a situation where there's no money left. And so for that reason, uh, the PACE legislation created some um, loan loss reserves, which I'll now describe to you. So to summarize what I've told you then, the PACE lien is below or subordinate to uh, any mortgages. Um, in Vermont, PACE is only available for residential properties, and there's a technical definition for that. The, the um, Truth in Lending Act spe specifies what are our residences. Um, and there have been two cr reserve accounts created, a um, account funded by participating property owners at a level of 2%. So I'll give you a numerical example. If I take out a $10,000 assessment, 2% of 10,000 is $200. I would have to pay $200 into the statewide reserve account. The purpose of that is to provide a pool of money so that if any properties do have a default, money is available to make whole, to pay off that, that um, debt. And again, just like property taxes, it just has to be paid up to today. Um, you can add that amount to your assessment. So if you took out the assessment I just described, $10,000, $200 payment in, I could actually take out an assessment for $10,200 and, and it could be paid off over the life of the assessment. Um, the second pool is there's something called REGI, the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, which is essentially a, a voluntary carbon market that um, uh, New England and a few other states participate in. Um, Efficiency Vermont sells the energy savings of, of the state of Vermont into that market and obtains several million dollars a year, which is used in the state for energy savings programs. Um, up to $1 million of that money has been designated as a loan loss reserve against this to provide protection. And so the combination of those two reserve accounts, 2% from participating property owners and 5% for Reggie, are sufficient to provide protection so that in an event of default, uh, however unlikely, um, there's more than enough money. In fact, the 2% by itself, there's more than enough money uh, to cover um, the loss scenarios. The additional 5% is really just to give um, comfort uh, for investors so that the rate that they're willing to accept is a reasonable one, and I'll, I'll detail that shortly. So uh, the two big questions that have come up uh, over the last couple of years have been, um, where's the money coming from and how can my town that's small, in many cases has a part-time clerk and so on, how can we hope to support a program like this? So the first one I've just answered for you, uh, no town needs to ha do municipal bonding. Um, there's a statewide um, credit facility being set up. It will be up to $20 million. The reason for the limit is uh, the Reggie funds are capped at $1 million. $1 million is 5% of $20 million, and so $20 million. That should be enough for something like 2,000 Vermont homes, um, and which is a, quite a substantial uh, contribution to, to uh, energy retrofits and, and renewables in the state. And the second question, how can... Um, a little town hope to do this is Efficiency Vermont is now named in the legislation as required to contact a town and offer assistance to run their PACE program. So Efficiency Vermont is available to act as the administrator for any town. All costs are paid by participating property owners, no cost to town. And, um, and those two changes are, are very much intended to um, address the two big concerns. And the, the changes I've just described went into effect on January 1st of 2012. Wondering what the, just wondering what the mechanism for uh, 
paying for, you know, just from the property owners that you were just mentioning? Sure. I'm actually going to go through several slides and detail exactly how it's calculated and how it's paid shortly. Any other questions right now? You, you, you had a furrowed brow. You, well, I, I missed out uh, on how many homes. So um, we don't know yet how many. So the question is how many um, homes will this $20 million cover? And we don't know yet how many people are going to do renewables, how many people are going to do just energy efficiency. Looking at the results in other parts of the country, um, I think $10,000 per home is a reasonable average. There are going to be quite a large number of houses that do less than that, just doing energy efficiency. Um, it's about $6,000 as a typical single family home cost in Vermont for um, energy retrofit. And there'll be other homes that are going to do you know, larger panels, so an average of about 10000 all right, um, again, there's an attachment at the back of the presentation here that's listing all the eligible measures, but I just wanted to explain a little bit to you about that. Um, the state's energy efficiency utilities, which is Efficiency Vermont or Burlington Electric in Burlington, um, jointly issue a list once a year. Um, that list was just updated, and the one you have right there is hot off the presses, um, and it was updated to match the new legislation, residential only, and it's quite a bit more specific than what uh, was out there before. A um, couple of important points. Homeowners are, are required to, and, and by the way, I know that tonight we have a little more of a renewable focus than typically what I talk about, so I tried to, to call out a couple of specific things. Um, homeowners are required to participate in all available rebate, rebate and incentive programs. What does that mean? That means that if there's an um, incentive available for insulating your home, and if in order to get that incentive you have to use a BPI certified contractor, you have to use a BPI certified contractor in order to finance through PACE. If you want to put on a renewable technology and there's an incentive available through the Clean Energy Development Fund and you have to use a Renewable Energy Vermont approved contractor, you have to use a Renewable Energy Vermont approved contractor in order to finance through PACE. So this is a good opportunity for me to highlight that PACE is not a program. It's not instead of anything. It's not instead of tax credits. It's not instead of incentives. It's not instead of Efficiency Vermont, it's a, it's a way to pay for it. So two people living in identical houses side by side could choose to do the exact same measures on their home, and one person could take a loan from a bank, and one person could t use PACE, and their third person down could just write out a check out of their savings or something, and all of those people would be able to get the same incentives, same tax credits, same everything. Um, it is an addition to, it is not instead of anything. Um, there is some specific wording in Vermont statute about what a renewable energy measure is. It has to do with something that can be harvested faster than it's used. Um, essentially, it's any um, technology that for which there's an incentive available from the Clean Energy Development Fund. And because that's an evolving list, the uh, measures point out that there, it is possible that the list can change, but it has to be reviewed on a custom basis. But you know, on a going forward basis, if, for example, there's a new biofuels incentive uh, next year of Clean Energy Development Fund that, that will be added to the eligible measures as well. All right, this is a very busy slide that, that I'm going to just boil down to uh, a, a couple simple concepts. Uh, across the top, we have once per municipality, uh, once per property, once per property tax payment, and then once per debt payment. Going down the side, we have the four players, the property owner, which I could say homeowner really, the municipality, Efficiency Vermont, and the financing source. Remember the top of the, the pile of ba the money bag at the top of the funnel. So each town, working our way across from left to right, each town has to do something first. They have to hold a vote. If, they, if their voters approve a PACE district, they have to create their PACE district. Um, all of the necessary documents are available on a website, which is at the very end of the presentation. Uh, we've been working with some 60 towns around the state to get people up to speed. Um, Answer, there's, the website is full of frequently asked questions and legal opinions and so on. A lot of towns have invested a, a pretty fair amount of um, time in learning about this. Um, but the town needs to set up their PACE district, and there's a fair amount of work involved in doing that, and there's no getting around it. Um, once that's done, however, the town doesn't have to do anything unless and until a property owner within that town chooses to opt in. Remember, that was across the bottom of the funnel there. And then that person needs to go through the process of identifying the measures and, and reserving funds and, and uh, having a lien put on their property and receiving the assessment and so on. And then once that's done for that property, the only additional work is that each time they get a property tax bill, 
they're going to get a special assessment bill as well. And that's a fixed rate bill, a fixed rate assessment. It'll be the same amount every time. So if your town collects taxes, say, three times a year, and if you take out a 20-year assessment, you will know what that payment is, and it'll be that same payment for the next 60 payments if you um, continue to have that, or for, or for whoever owns that house. So in summary, everything on this page can be outsourced. A town does not have to uh, themselves administer any of these things, except what's in the circle right there. They have to hold the vote, and they have to design the program. And that's not something that can be outsourced, but everything else can be. Okay. So these are the towns in the state that have already designated themselves as PACE districts. All of them were on town meeting day last day, except for Montpelier, which had a special election. Um, none of these towns have actually done any PACE financing because of the changes I described with the um, Federal Housing Finance Agency. Um, and and I, by the way, I didn't really uh, finish that thought, is essentially every residential PACE program in the country stopped. Uh, within a week after this letter came out because what, what the FHFA said to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is you may not buy a mortgage that has a senior PACE assessment. And so the banks in the various parts of the country said, I can't issue you a mortgage if you've got a PACE assessment because I won't be able to sell it to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. So it had a, just an instant chilling effect. Um, Vermont is the only state in the country that has come up with a solution to this problem and has gone forward with a, with a residential PACE program. So these are the 13 towns that have al already voted. And this is the list of towns that have notified Efficiency Vermont that they have a question on their ballot. There are, I'm certain that there are at least another 10 or 12 uh, that we just haven't heard from yet. We may not hear from them until the day after town meeting day, um, this being Vermont. Um, but uh, these ones uh, have a PACE question on. And then you can see that quite a few local towns represented here. If it, I, here's a great opportunity. Does anybody know that their town has a PACE ball ballot question that, I haven't, that they're not up here? It's never too late to get added to the list. No, huh? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to walk through uh, an example. Um, th it happens that this is a, uh, an efficiency example because, again, this is Efficiency Vermont and that's our primary work. But all the concepts I'm describing here apply equally to a renewable. So you could, you could just as easily imagine, for example, that this is a solar hot water project. Okay? So um, in this example, this particular house, this is a composite example, um, 2,000 square foot home, uh, had an energy audit. The um, contractor recommended insulation throughout the house. Lower door directed air sealing, which I don't know if you're all familiar with that, but it just means finding the leaks in the house and sealing them up. Um, and also sealing and insulating the uh, heating and cooling duct work. Um, these numbers that are right here are actual statewide averages. So over the last couple of years, the average single family home in Vermont doing a project like this has spent about $7,500. has been the total project cost. The average efficiency Vermont incentive for that work has been about $1,700. Uh, and by the way, that money comes from the Reggie funds that I described earlier and will continue to be available. Um, so that leaves a net cost to the customer of about $5,800. Um, this particular home, uh, assuming that it's using fuel oil or propane, would be very likely to experience savings on the order of about $1,000 a year. And that's, that's, if anything, conservative. Um, natural gas is a bit of an outlier because um, prices have been dropping there. But other than natural gas, um, this is quite a typical savings, okay? So we'll continue on. So there's the $5,800 net project cost. These are all representative numbers. I don't want you to hold me to them, but I'm just using them as examples. I'm showing an example of an audit fee, an application fee, permits, coming up to $66.50. 2% of $66.50 is $133. That's a great example of showing that that's really a very small amount of money. Um, that's, to be clear, that money goes into the reserve account and it will never come out again unless and until there's a default of a, of a participating property. So that's, that is a closing cost. That is a non-refundable payment. Um, I had somebody getting very insistent with me saying, well, what if I don't default? Do I get my money back? And I said, it's like life insurance. If you, you don't get your premium back if you don't die. So you, <laughs> you, you spend that money and it's gone. You got, you got what you're supposed to get for it. But you can add that into your assessment. So you could take out an assessment for $6,783. Okay, so let's take a look at how you calculate the eligibility. Um, there are two requirements. Uh, the first is that the PACE assessment cannot exceed the lesser of $30,000 or 15% of the value of the property. 
So um, $200,000 is in fact the median value of a single family home in Vermont. So $200,000, 15% of that is $30,000. Um, so uh, there's a second requirement. The value of your mortgage, any existing mortgage balance plus the assessment cannot exceed 90%. So in this example, $200,000 home, 90% is $180,000. So what this is showing you is if this home worth $200,000 has a mortgage of $173,000, then the difference between those two is $27,000. In my example, the assessment amount is $67,83, and so the value of the mortgage plus that assessment is just less than 90%, and so this, pro this project would be able to go forward. To be clear, if this person wanted to do a $30,000 project, they would not be eligible. Um, now, there is one additional point, and that is that um, BISHCA, the Banking, Insurance, Securities, and Healthcare Administration, which is a Vermont state regulator, um, has allowed that if you have a uh, recent appraisal, less than six months old, that shows a higher value. So like, let's say your uh, home on your grand list of your town is listed at $200,000, but you just refinanced your mortgage, and you've got an appraisal here that says your house is worth $220,000. If you want to, you can choose to use that $220,000 on the appraisal, and that would, in fact, allow you to do quite a bit more um, of a PACE assessment than what I'm showing here. Okay? Question? Yes? What does the CLTV stand for? Combined Loan to Value. Okay. Yeah, yes. All right, so now I'm, I'm walking through an example of how a PACE assessment is calculated. Uh, I'm showing an annual interest rate of 7.5%. We don't know yet what the rate is going to be. Um, to be clear, it is going to be higher than a mortgage rate. And if that surprises you and you're saying, why would I do this then if I could just you know, refinance my mortgage? Refinance your mortgage. That's a good idea. I did. I did that three years ago. But remember what I said on the very first slide. A lot of people are not willing to act because they're not willing to make that multi-year commitment. I was. I had, at the time, a 10-year-old kid. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we want to stay in this house, and I had no um, issue with taking on that financing. But you might feel differently in your situation. Um, I would make the comparison to when people lease new cars. You know, it's always cheaper to buy a new car than it is to lease it when you work through the numbers. But millions of people every year lease cars. And the reason they do is because they know what their monthly payment is, and they know that at the end of the lease, they hand the keys back to the dealer, and it's not their car anymore. And that's a very good comparison to what we're talking about here. Because if you take out a PACE assessment, you know what your payments are going to be. And when you know when you sell the house, it's not your bill anymore. So um, it might be the case that over the course of three or four years, you might pay a few hundred dollars more for a PACE assessment than you would if you had, for example, refinanced your mortgage. Might not be, because there's a lot of closing costs involved with refinancing your mortgage. But the point I'm making is, the difference in price might be a few hundred dollars, but the ability to sell the house and leave without having to deal with paying off the remaining thousands of dollars might make it worth to you. Um, and that's really another way of saying that the, the solution that PACE offers uh, that is not offered by other products is this ability to pay as you go and to not pay um, when it's not your house. Um, an analogy I heard that, that I like is cell phones. If you had to pay for 20 years of minutes when you bought a cell phone, we'd have a lot fewer cell phones, which would be maybe not a bad thing. But, um, but you understand what I'm saying, is the cell phone companies found a business model that got us all to, to sign on. Uh, and this is the same concept. So um, whatever the rate is, it's going to be in this ballpark. But that, by the way, includes a probably about a half a percent adder that Efficiency Vermont will charge for the services that it's providing, which is um, you know, mailing out statements and collecting checks and depositing them and so on. Um, I'm showing an example of a 20-year term. That is the maximum. Uh, in my example, there are four payments a year. Um, around the state of Vermont, there are one, two, three, and four property tax payments a year. So in this example, this person would pay $164.35 each and every time they pay the property tax bill for the next 20 years. Or if they sold the house, the new owner would do so. Um, I just threw in the total interest and total cost for sort of full disclosure. And then to sum it all up at the bottom here, what I'm showing you is that in this example, this person who took out a just under $6,800 assessment would pay $652 and change a year. Their estimated energy savings this year would be $1,000. If energy prices keep rising, that cost is going to stay fixed. That energy savings is going to increase. 
So right now in year one, that annual cash flow is $347. 10 years from now, 15 years from now, it might be $1,000 more than that. So in financial terms, because again, I'm here to talk about financial concepts, what, you're, what this is, is it's called a hedging strategy. We don't know what future energy prices are going to do, but whatever they do, if you need less of it, it'll affect you less. And that's what this is. This is spending a certain amount of money now to avoid spending some, avo some period, um, portion of money in the future. Any question before I move on from this? I felt a little disturbance in the force there. A few people shuffling around. Yes, it was you. <laughs> no, I know. I'm joking. It's, is it true that you can prepay this at any time without penalty the same way you can a mortgage? Yes. So the question is, can you prepay without penalty? Yes, provided that you pay it in full. So unlike a mortgage where you can round up or, you know, you get some windfall and you send a few hundred dollars in or something, you can't do that. You, you can either make your payments or you can call up and get your payoff amount like you can with a, with a mortgage. And really that's just down to the administrative burden. You know, this is a new product and we just couldn't... Uh, contemplate being able to manage that. But yes, you can pre and, and um, looking at other places in the country, for example, Boulder County, Colorado, which, um, you know, different place in Vermont, certainly, but uh, about 300,000 people, so about half the size of Vermont, uh, in one year, they did about a thousand residential PACE assessments in one year. So this really isn't an untried concept. I mean, it's remarkable that they did that kind of scale in one year. And so we have the benefit of seeing some of those houses have been sold, um, some of these assessments have transferred with no problem. In certain cases, people have um, decided that they wanted to pay it off. Uh, read about an example where somebody bought it and simply paid it off and rolled it into their mortgage, which makes very good sense. So I do think this is something that, even though it's a new concept, it's not hard to see how someone could fit it into the rest of the financial complexities of owning a home. You know, they could turn it into a mortgage if they wanted to. All right, I mentioned Bishka earlier. Um, again, a, a reminder that Vermont is the only state that is going forward with the residential PACE program, so, so we can be happy for that. Um, the guidelines, that, the, not, they're not guidelines, the criteria, the requirements that Bishka issued are more um, complex than, than some of us would have hoped. Um, there are some um, bright points to it that I'll highlight, but to summarize, every town must follow these criteria. Um, a PACE assessment must include a 2% payment be secured by a lien, and it must, and this is important, must not have negative amortization or adjustable rates or balloon payments. So that means that your uh, assessment payments must be calculated as an amortized loan, just like a bank mortgage, and have to be paid off in full over the life of the assessment. And that's a good thing. If your mortgage holder requires you to escrow your property taxes and your insurance and so on, they may very well require you to escrow your PACE assessment, as they would any assessment. Um, I mentioned this earlier, so I, I, I won't go into it, just to state that, you know, here, here's the summary of it. The lesser of, oh, actually there's a point here. The 30,000, the 15% of your choice, either your grand list, your equalized grand list value, the, the value that your, your property tax is calculated on, or an appraisal that's not more than six months old, your choice. And the final one says the amount of the PACE assessment. That may sound like a, like a well duh, but what that means is you can't do any cash out. You can only take out a PACE assessment for the size of the investment in your property and the necessary fees to do that. So you can't, you can't take out a PACE assessment and take a vacation to Bailey's. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I already described this thing earlier about the 90%. Okay. All right. So uh, there's the definition of residential dwelling. That's from the Federal Truth in Lending Act. Um, so yes, a vacation home, uh, one to four unit owner-occupied. So if there's a one to four unit um, structure and you live in one of the units, you can use PACE on that structure. If it's one to four units and it's an investment property and you're the landlord, you cannot use um, PACE. Uh, manufactured home, meaning a mobile home, if the owner pays the property taxes. So in other words, you can't drive it away during the night. You, got, you, have, to be, you have to be the one who's paying the property taxes. And you have to be located in a PACE district, to your question earlier. This is only uh, the, the first step in the process must be that the town creates the PACE district. Um, all of these other are really quite common sense. You have to be current on your property taxes. You have to be, you know, th there can't be a, a lien that's, that's um, uh, you know, on your 
thing like you know un unresolved alimony payments and things like that, reverse mortgages, all of those things, defaults, foreclosures, delinquencies. Um, the participant must own the property. That sounds like another well duh, but what that means is if you own your property jointly with somebody, all owners have to sign the PACE assessment. So you can't, uh, you know, it's, I'm not going to get into marriage counseling here, but if you and your other do not agree on this, um, you're not going to be able to do PACE assessments because you're both going to have to agree to it. Um, and you're going to have to certify and prove that you are um, not overdue on any mortgages or other liens. And then finally, the, there's a requirement that the participant's debt to income ratio does not exceed 41%. What that means is that you will have to um, provide certain documents, have a credit check done, pay stub, things like that. Um, what's going to happen is Efficiency Vermont is, is going to enter into a contract with a financial institution, a bank or a credit union, and they will process all this paperwork. So you're not going to be sending a copy of your pay stub to Efficiency Vermont. It's going to be part of an application that's going to go to a bank, just as you would with a, with a, um, with a mortgage. Um, the one um, point I'd like to highlight about that is that debt to income does include both your PACE assessment and the energy savings. So in my example earlier where you're about to take on a $635 PACE assessment but you're about to save $1,000, that $635 would count as part of your debt, but your $1,000 would also count as part of your income. So the project you're about to do is going to help you qualify for the assessment. And that's something no bank will do. Peter? Yes. Who determines that the savings will be? Ah, good question. So there's a requirement in the legislation that, that when you come up with your proposed work scope, it must be submitted to the energy efficiency utility, either Efficiency Vermont or Burlington Electric Department in Burlington. And that entity will review the proposed work, will look at the projected energy savings, will calculate the assessment cost, and will calculate the difference between those two. So you'll get a single piece of paper that says you're planning on doing um, energy work, windows, and solar hot water, and it will have the cost and assessment, uh, the, the savings, the assessment cost, and the net and then it will have a total in the bottom. And, and there is no requirement that the bottom number be positive. There's no requirement that you have positive cash flow. In the statewide enabling legislation, a town could choose to put that on. Um, because this is enabling legislation, it just authorizes towns in the state to, do, to have a PACE district. It doesn't require them to, um, they, they cannot be, less conservative than the, than the statewide level, but they could be more conservative. So a town could choose to say, for example, you must have positive cash flow. Um, but anyway, that, so that number is calculated by the, um, by the town, by the efficiency utility. Uh, I had a question about if you make an investment that qualifies for tax credits and or um, rebates, which most things I think would. Right. Um, if you have to have your contracts are paid at the time the work's complete, you're going to have to pay 100% of the cost. But if after incentives you get down to 60 or 70%, you'd clearly like to make that 30% payment off the principal of the loan. But what I'm hearing is that you wouldn't be allowed to do that. You'd need to continue to make the either larger payments associated with the 100% amount or pay it off completely. Has that been looked into? Uh, yeah. So the question basically sums up to these timing differences. Um, when, you, when I said earlier you must avail yourself of all available rebate and incentive programs, people's tax situations change. A lot of tax credits rely on the fact that you already have a tax bill that you can net this credit against. There's no reason to assume that every person's going to be able to do that. Some people, excuse me, may not be able to do it in a year. They might have to do it over multiple years. So that's not part of the calculation. So if you're doing a $30,000 renewable project and you're going to get a your potentially eligible for a 30% investment tax credit, you can still take out an assessment for $30,000. You'll get that tax credit later, but it, 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 you won't have that amount withheld. But you would not be able to say, let's say you put in a $30,000 system, you get nine. Just to say you put in a $30,000 solar system, you get $9,000 back. You wouldn't be able to then, say nine months later, pay that $9,000 back no. off your pace. You would not. It would be, as you said, either you would either have to um, finance that some other way and have the lower assessment payments going forward or pay off the assessment in full. Yeah. All right. Um, 
So there's my contact information. Also, I'm pleased to have uh, somebody to share this burden with, uh, a woman named Carol Weston, who has joined um, Efficiency Vermont recently, is now the program manager for PACE, and is, there's her contact information. At the bottom there is the website that um, is really geared towards towns that have been, and, and energy advocates that have been educating themselves about PACE and working to get um, PACE on their ballots. Um, and so if you're interested, you can really get a lot of information there. There's discussion boards. Um, there's a tremendous amount of information there, and it's very updated, very current. So I, I highly recommend that to you. Um, so are there any other questions? Yes. Can you talk about from the municipality's point of view? Sure. So um, remember I said earlier, so the question is talk about it from the municipality's point of view. Um, really, all the comments that I've gotten from towns over the last several years boil down to where's the money coming from and how can I hope to do this? So as I, as I mentioned earlier on this one slide, which I'll back up to, a town can uh, enter into an agreement with Efficiency Vermont and have them act as their program administrator. So what does that mean in practical terms? It means that if somebody calls the town clerk, which I'm guessing you might be the town clerk? Treasurer. Treasurer, okay. So you're sympathet a sympathetic uh, figure. So you could just say, um, our town has hired Efficiency Vermont as our administrator. So call the Ver Efficiency Vermont customer service number. And they would call and they'd say, what town do you live in? And when they tell them the town, they'd say, okay, um, what do you need? Well, I'd like to understand what's involved in applying, okay? There's somebody who's on the phone who can answer that for you. There'll be information on the website. There'll be an online application form. Um, there'll be somebody available to answer questions, you know. Um, this is where it begins to dovetail into what's already happening in the state. And, and Vermont is really, uh, and I realize this is a self-serving comment because I work for the company that runs Efficiency Vermont, but, but you know, Vermont has a, a statewide efficiency utility that is the envy of a lot of states in the country. Um, we're generating, we're the only state in the country that has actually reduced our electric load through uh, efficiency, um, the only one. And so it's an enormously successful program. So when someone calls up and needs information about what measures and what's going to save money and what contractors are available, that network already exists. Um, it's Efficiency Vermont, it's the Home Performance with Energy Star project um, program, um, and so you're just plugging right into those things. So if a person then decides to do that, they can um, apply uh, through Efficiency Vermont, they can um, get their work order signed off on, they can reserve their funds. Uh, the town would have to be involved in a lien being placed on the property. Um, and I would strongly urge that, that a town should have a policy of at the last step when a check is being dispersed that somebody in the town ticks a box and says, yep, I know this property, I know it has a lien on it, I know it's, it's uh, signed an assessment agreement, I know it's current on its property taxes, and so on. Um, once that's done, then the um, bill will go out at the same time as the property tax bill, a separate bill, a separate piece of paper, uh, and the payment can be sent directly into the same bank that uh, the Public Service Board uses for all um, Efficiency Vermont business, which is People's United Bank, is the fiscal agent for the state. and um, the town would, um, would really just have to receive a statement at year end. You know, as a property owner got a statement saying, here was your assessment balance at the start of the year, here it is at the end of the year, this is how much was principal, this is how much was interest, and uh, the town would get, a, would get a summary report that would list all properties in the town that what their status was. And as long as people keep paying their um, assessments, that is it, um, and which is, leaves a great hanging question. What if they don't pay their assessments? And then, then this, what I'd like to say to you is the ultimate authority, the, the, the foundation that PACE rests on is that a town has a lien on a property and it has the legal authority to collect on that lien. And ultimately, if somebody does not pay their assessments, a town needs to represent that they will collect all assessments in the same manner and to the same extent as taxes <coughs> assessed on the grand list. So if a per, if a property owner is not making their PACE assessment payments, ultimately the town is the one that's going to have to enforce the collection of that, however far-fetched you think that scenario is. And remember that they can keep a property from being sold. So if somebody tries to sell the property, they'd have to bring their assessments as, long, as well as their property taxes current. But if somebody simply isn't paying their assessment payments for an extended period of time, a town would eventually, eventually have to get involved in that, just as they would if somebody didn't pay the property taxes. So you can only imagine that I have numerous questions. Mm -hmm. Is it appropriate to bring them up now, or should I talk to you afterwards? Um, well, 
uh, if you've got one that you think is of general interest, um, by all means, um, I would be happy to, to talk with you or correspond with you. I bet you that a lot of the questions you're asking are on that website I was just uh, highlighting to you. But Could you cycle please. back to the last uh, slide? Sure. And again, there no, are no, no. handouts that have the, uh, this information on it. I assume you want the very last? The one that gave the contact place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have the printout, it's, ah. it's on that as well. Yep. So oh, okay. I'd be happy to, to, to okay. answer your questions. All right? Yes? Um, what has been the typical uh, route that a town has taken to inform people to, to get to um, to get to the uh, to, to the voting situation? What right. have towns done to do typical that? Typical in Vermont. That's a remarkable <laughs> thought. Ab sorry? Want me to answer that we're in our uh, sure. Well, we'll get an example from one particular town. That's a great idea. I'm the chair of the Weybridge Energy Committee, and so what we did was we went to our select board and got them to agree to this, to put it on the ballot, and they were very interested, so now it's on the ballot in Weybridge. And we've had one meeting where everybody was invited. Um, we sent a letter. To everybody in town, our select board agreed to do that. So we sent a letter to everybody in the town saying that this was going to be on the ballot. What else have we done? John, what else have we done? Chris? Um, we're going to have a table at town meeting with a poster. We're going to give out a flyer. Um, there's going to be an interview in the Addison Independent shortly, I understand, for all the towns that are going to be a part of this. So hopefully we'll all get our chance to say this is going to be on the ballot. Uh, it was in our town newsletter. Um, I'm going to write a letter to the editor. So, you know, that's that's what we've done so far. But there's still plenty of people out there who have no idea what this is. So we plan to, Chris Eaton is here. He's going to be talking about this at town meeting. He's going to explain it to everybody, and take questions on the floor. And then the next day it will be on, the, on our ballot. It's going to be by Australian ballot. It, some of the towns are voting on it for, as a voice vote, I think Ripton. But in Weybridge it has to be... Um, it has to be on the uh, Australian ballot. So that's, that's what we're doing. That's great. Thank you. And I would say the one common theme is that every town that has been successful, there's been a champion. There's been um, somebody who's made it their business to, to see this go forward. And I think without that, it's, it's just too difficult to, to do it. I actually have two questions. Yep. So if our town doesn't actually happen to uh, make it on the ballot for this year, right. is it's it going to be too late. It's too late already. Right. Will it be upped again, like maybe next year or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. In fact, I would say, I would describe the strategy of what we're doing here is we, we, when I say we, Efficiency Vermont, as the intended administrator of this, had no interest in having 150 towns go live at once. So we certainly have not been selling this. You know, we've been providing information. We've been helping people who want to go forward. And the theory is if you get 25 or 30 eager towns and they have a great experience, they can tell their neighbors a year from now, right. and I won't have to do anything. Right. Right. So that's, it's really, it's, that's exactly what we're planning on doing, okay. is that a year down the road. Yeah, I think I'm in one of those towns that have to see what happens yeah. before it happens. And it's, it's hard to argue with. Yeah. And the other question is, um, you might have already mentioned it, but the percentage rate, I mean, it's, it's kind of acting like a mortgage. So it, it, does it vary, or is it? Yeah, it, uh, it has to be, it's fixed. for the, So for each individual, the question is, uh, does the rate vary? It must be a fixed rate. And it must, so it must be fixed for the full life of the assessment. But over time, the rate will change based on market conditions, just like mortgages. Okay. So I think we can expect to see this come in around the 2%, 2.5% over a 30-year mortgage level. Okay. So if 30-year mortgages are, you know, let's say 4% right now, 4.5%, maybe we're talking about 7%, something like that. Great, thanks. Uh, I'm Fred Donington. I'm the town planner in Middlebury and chair of the Energy Committee. Town Energy Coordinator. Um, in Middlebury, this question will be on our ballot at town meeting. It'll be on the floor vote on Monday night, so there'll be an opportunity to discuss it briefly. Uh, it, the way we have fashioned the question on in Middlebury is, shall the town authorize the select board to enter into an agreement with Efficiency Vermont to administer this program? Uh, not all towns are doing it that way. Some towns are, are, are uh, voting it uh, more directly, but our thinking is that, uh, no disrespect to your view that the towns have an, such an intimate, warm relationship with property owners at tax time, uh, 
actually uh, on the inside of our organization, our town treasurer, uh, uh, we would like to establish this in a way that uh, with the town's authority, with proper accounting, uh, basically uh, hands this to Efficiency Vermont to administer. We would, uh, through this agreement, have the assessments or payments made, maybe on a monthly basis, maybe with automatic deposit, something much more convenient so that a property owner can see the benefit of their savings at the same time as their payments. And, you know, the big one of the biggest tax bills ever pays in, the, in a year is their property tax payment. So, uh, although you might think that it's just wonderful to add this to tax bills, mm -hmm. Actually, we kind of think that it might be better for property owners not to heap more on their tax bills and to relate this more directly to their energy savings. So our thinking is that we would administer this through Efficiency Vermont. When you qualify properties, they would sign up and make direct monthly payments in the name of the town and uh, you know, to, co to cover everything legally, but it would go direct. And the idea is we make it easy for property owners and keep actually the town out of the middle of handling the cash. Uh, uh, we, we, you know, there are a few towns that you, you, you noted that our towns are all different. And uh, uh, we come at this from the philosophy that it would not be a good idea for the town to get in between any property owner and its contractor in terms of energy home improvements. <laughs> nor is it a great idea for the town to be involved in judging the credit worthiness of any homeowner. So we're going to let you do that. Right, or as I said earlier, a bank or credit union. Right, uh, and, and that we will do our, our job, which is to record the documents that come in and only if necessary use the town's authority in the process of collection. Exactly. And as a, that's, that's great. Thank you. I, I don't disagree with anything you just said. That's a great example of how a town can modify the program as long as they, you know, they, they're not making it less conservative, they're going with monthly. And also remember that something like half of all mortgage payers in Vermont at, use escrow to pay the property taxes and insurance and so on. And so this would just be added to that. And as a practical matter, they'd be making monthly payments anyway. Anybody else? I do want to let Ludie have her time. I'm going to stick around, so if you have questions afterwards. One last thing I do want to mention is, I don't have a few copies with me, but it's also on the website, is Beth Pierce, the state treasurer, has been a very ardent supporter of, Bath, of PACE. Um, that's important because she's the state treasurer. It's also be important because the state treasurer has a mandated role in managing one of the reserve accounts. So she's really written a, a, a wonderful letter of support for the whole PACE concept. Um, as I said, I have several copies here. I'll leave them out here. They're also available on that website. And any of you who are interested, I, I really urge you to check this letter out because it's quite a powerful um, letter of support from the state treasurer. Okay. Could I ask one last question? Yes. Does anybody know a source of the degree, degree days for Middlebury or Cornwall or Weybridge? Uh, if you don't know the number of degree days, it's very difficult to sure. judge how well you're doing. I, I, I said earlier I'm an energy geek. I'm not that big of a geek. But if you, <laughs> there's my email address. If you send me an email, I will send you a link that will give you that information. Thank you very there's much. There's a government, a U.S. government link that has all that yeah. everywhere in the country. I have been saying it's fine. If you send me an email, I'll Okay, we'll do. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Our next speaker is Ludi Biddle, and she is the Executive Director of Neighbor Works of Western Vermont. Well, please welcome Ludi. Well, thank you very much. This is, this is exciting to be here. Um, I am going to tell you about our financing program, but I'm going to give you a few paragraphs of description of our program before I get to the um, financing mechanisms within. NeighborWorks um, of Western Vermont, we're located in West Rutland, Vermont. We've been um, a nonprofit um, housing organization founded in 1986 to provide rehab services to low-income households, originally in four towns, ultimately within a few years, um, the whole county of Rutland. And um, since 2004, we've been providing um, our rehab services and a number of other services in um, homeownership assistance um, to Addison and Bennington County as well. So we have um, 
just you know for background, we have home buyer education, we have um, lending for first time homeowners um, who often don't qualify for commercial loans. We have second mortgages that help them qualify. We have all kinds of education assistance to um, homeowners. We have, as I say, been doing rehab in primarily in low income households for a very long time. And a few years uh, ago, we started doing efficiency measures in these homes. And efficiency measures in a lot of the homes we were visiting were very significant in, in, in sustaining our mission with ho these homeowners in that efficiency measures saved money to a great extent. It wasn't uncommon that we were saving $1,600 a year um, in, in a lot of these homes. And that is a very important aspect for a lot of the people that we were working with. So with some success and with some experience, um, we applied to the Department of Energy um, to what was then called, oh, I forget, EECVG. It, um, we were awarded a grant of four and a half million dollars for Rutland County, I'm sorry to say, but we are going to expand this to Addison County. Um, f uh, our promise to the Department of Energy was that we would um, implement or we would somehow encourage 1,000 households to engage in energy efficiency upgrades in a three-year period by providing the kind of customer service that our program had been providing over the years. And we call that customer service a one-stop shop. We have our rehab services, which means we, have, uh, we send out inspectors to the property, we do a scope of work, we get estimates for the homeowner, we then have a loan for the homeowner, which is affordable, it's appropriate, um, we do construction management for the homeowner. We escrow the funds. We approve the work before a check is, is, is handed over to the contractor, that kind of thing. So we simply expanded that program to include energy efficiency. And lo and behold, the Department of Energy took a chance on this little program in Rutland County and um, added us to the list of grantees, uh, most of which were states and cities and, and um, big um, energy projects, but uh, they took a chance on us. So we have um, been very fortunate. We are now um, a little more than halfway through the project. Uh, we have completed over 200, I think it's 240 homes have been the entire way through the efficiency project. They've um, gotten their, their incentive payments and they're comfortable, they've taken their socks off. <laughs> They're warm and happy in their homes. And I, I really agree with Peter that comfort is probably the, um, the reward that they least expect and most notice. Uh, and the cost savings is, is significant, but I think comfort is what we hear about so often when we go back to the homes that um, have, have taken us up on this project. Um, we have about another 200 program, you know, homes in process, and about 40% of the homes that actually go through the audit process are moving to the, to the retrofit phase and, and making the investment in their home. The average um, project is costing, as Peter said, it's about $6,700. The average incentive payment has been about $1,700. Um, the average cost saving has been about $1,000, but in some cases, as I say, it's, it's a great deal more than that. The average energy saved is 34%. So if you take 34% of your energy costs, it's, 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 a, it's a huge benefit to any of these households. Um, the, the part that we have, the, the sort of crucial part of our program is this customer service. And I think that we feel very strongly that our interaction with these households one-on-one -on -one is what has um, got them engaged in doing the project and, and seen them through to the end. We work very closely with the contractors. We have 15 contractors working um, in an with, you know, under an agreement with us. We have a big meeting with um, the 15 plus their their um, assistance tomorrow morning. We do that once a month. 
And we have, um, these are the good, this is the good news that comes from um, a project that we keep careful track of. We have 48 people who, ha we have the names and addresses of 48 people who have a job in this industry um, since we started this project. So it's, it, you know, the, the benefits just keep accruing in a very circular and, and significant way. Um, so I'm going to jump quickly and, and, and save some of the details. Um, but we also have a loan program. The NeighborWorks programs um, have established a revolving loan fund with block grant money years ago. We've built on that. When we got this grant from the Department of Energy, 1.6 million of the total was um, granted to establish a loan loss reserve and a revolving loan fund. We already had licensed lenders on our staff and uh, a loan committee and all the sort of infrastructure um, that we needed to, to be lenders. But we designed a special product for this program, um, whereas most of our lending has been in mortgage is a sort of mortgage product. Um, in the case of our energy project, we are issuing an unsecured loan. Um, we allow up to 10 years. Uh, our rate is 4.99%. We will automatically approve a loan to anyone whose credit score is 640 or above, and 640 is actually on the lower side of, of um, the sort of traditional eligibility threshold. Um, and then for a household that's below 640, we'll do manual underwriting. And that just means it goes through the loan committee. And if the loan committee is satisfied that, you know, whereas there's a blemish on a credit report or something, if, if there's um, an honest effort to um, improve things, and this is a household that needs this work, we're, we're happy to take that risk. Um, I don't have all the statistics, but I do know that unsecured loans kind of scare people, but the history, it's not a long history, but history of unsecured lending in energy programs such as in Pennsylvania and other places, um, there's been very little problem, there's been very little delinquency, very little default. In our case, we've had absolutely none whatsoever. We, um, we have, uh, you know, a perfect record. It's not a long record, but it's been, um, you know, a, we've had no problem. In most cases, um, and we're talking with challenged households too, so I, I really reiterate that this has been a successful um, risk that we've been willing to take. Um, in most cases, the cost of the loan is less than the savings that the household is enjoying. As Peter said, it, we are basically able, in most cases, unless someone's doing a huge project, um, including perhaps a, a new furnace and some additional work. And yes, we do fund um, some renewables. Um, so in, unless they're doing a, a significantly higher cost project than our average, most of our loan uh, structure has been cash flowing for the, for the household. So it's not very complicated. Um, a, an applicant um, fills out a paperwork. We have people who are happy to help them because um, a lot of people are challenged at reading these lengthy documents. Um, most of our approval is um, accomplished within a few days, unless it has to go to the loan committee. But there's a loan committee meeting every couple of weeks. Um, we, you know, we can coordinate the loan with the project costs because the construction managers are basically almost in the same room. And, and then work is approved, work um, is undertaken with the contractor, and our construction managers approve the uh, work as, it, as it's proceeding unless you know, it's all done in a week, and then um, we, pay, we pay from the escrow account for our clients. Um, so that's a that's a really quick synopsis. I'm 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 run, I'm sort of um, walking on the shoulders of Peter, who's told you a lot about the financing of of other programs and sort of the basics in financing energy projects. And I really think I could probably take questions rather quickly if you like. You didn't mention if there was an income eligibility to be in this program. There is no income eligibility in this particular program. 
in our in other programs and other loan sources and you know products that we have there is eligibility but in this energy project there is none we are doing our best to serve and we do make um, some of some of additional assistance available to low income households but no everybody is eligible to apply for our loan and in fact a number of people have applied for the loan who could go and you know, amend their mortgage, uh, or could, could could go to other sources for even less money than the 4.99, but they've come to our loan product because it's so quick and simple, and it's just right next door with, with all the work that's being done. We are, as I say, we are planning to extend this program um, into Addison County. I don't know how quickly I would think by next year we'll have um, the ability to do this. At the moment, we're um, restricted to using our DOE grant to Rutland County. That was that was part of their uh, requirement. Yes. Do you hire construction managers as employees of NeighborWorks, or do you have them as contractors? We have um, we have two construction managers as employees of NeighborWorks. And then we have um, 15 BPI certified contractors doing the efficiency work. So our construction managers, um, over the years, we've had this health and safety program. Now all of our rehabs include health, safety, and efficiency. Um, in, in the instance where we have a low income household, and this is, you know, this is currently available to Addison, Bennington, and Rutland County, our construction managers do this work. The, the, the loan product and so forth is not available to Addison quite yet. The, uh, but our regular loan product is, oh, I'm sure I've got you terribly confused, but our regular loan product that is available to the lower income households is available. The uh, projects that you're accomplishing in these properties, is this just weatherization, insulation? Is it also solar thermal, photovoltaic? What sorts of things are you doing? Are you putting in new furnaces? We are doing a lot of furnaces. Um, we've just started, and this is a wonderful um, addition to our program. For now four of the oil companies have um, agreed to, or actually two have already accomplished this. They've put a card into their bills and they're dropping them when they drop oil to say that um, they're, per they're partnering with NeighborWorks. They're giving 25, they're, they're subsidizing $25 on the cost of the audit um, and they're doing a free checkup on the furnace. So th these are oil companies that are helping households save the cost for, for fuel uh, and working with us to do this, which is really wonderful. I mean, I think it's counterintuitive, but it's not. It's, it's very definitely what they want to do. Do you see many uh, photovoltaic or solar thermal projects, or is that? We have done. We've done a lot of solar hot water. We haven't done uh, PV. We haven't done a lot of the, the higher cost projects. We can. Um, we have to do efficiency measures before we do any renewables. What's the average cost of an energy audit? Um, in the in the rest of the state, it's I think three fifty to four fifty, um, and it was of course. But with with this mandate and this opportunity from this DOE grant, we're allowed to experiment. And what we've done, I think the first the first several months that, of our project, we um, charged fifty dollars because we wanted to test and prove to ourselves whether or not re sort of dropping that entry level, what we thought was a barrier, would make a difference. And what sort of had been the standard um, wisdom across the country was where you have it, where you have the audit cost really low, lots of people take you up on the audit, and then you never see them again. So, and you know, I we can understand that. What we did was, um, We've now raised the cost of the audit to $100 up front, 
and then we take 250 out of the incentive payment, and this is all agreed upon ahead of time. If they've gone ahead with the project, they're happy with the project and they've got their incentive check. Uh, what was I gonna say? Um, we certainly do believe that, um, that 400, 350, 400, 450 cost of an audit upfront is a barrier. And, um, and yet, when we dropped that barrier and added this customer service aspect, and I haven't given you all the details, but um, when we add that customer service, we, as I said, we've been converting, which is the sort of terminology around the country, um, over 40, I think currently 43% of the households going through the audit process go on to the retrofit process. And that has made pff, national news. <laughs> That's one of the things we're very proud of. Is that of. just in Rutland County, or is that also? Well, that's in the, the right now. Right. This 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 model is just in Rutland County. But the purpose of the Better Buildings Grant and the purpose of our um, <coughs> efforts is to test and modify and adapt and then take it on. And the cur the plan, the the idea, the dream. It's not a a plan. I couldn't. I shouldn't call it that. But the dream is to work with the other neighbor works organizations around the state because they all have this existing one-stop shop. There are five there are five neighbor works in Vermont. It's the only state in the country that's entirely covered by a neighbor works network. Um, each of us is working in at least three counties. I think nobody's more than three counties come to think of it. Um, and we work very closely together. We have, you know, similar standards and we're <laughs> were scrutinized and, and trained and, and so forth. So I'm um, taking it throughout the state in this uh, one-stop shop model is, is my dream. It's not my reality yet, but I, it's my dream. Is there other questions? A lot of low-income households in Vermont don't own their own homes. Do you work with um, renters that have high energy costs and through their landlords? or We do. We do. Um, we've had a number of, la uh, you know, uh, particularly when a landlord is paying for the <laughs> for the energy costs, um, we have worked with a lot, and um, we don't you we don't work in multifamily with this particular project, but we do work in single family or that one to four unit definition of a residential uh, household, and yes, it's been very successful. And very, you know, very satisfying to to those people. Great. Excellent. Those are often um, structures that have not had a lot of attention paid to them, and this is, you know, the the whole, once again, that sort of whole um, customer service aspect has made it um, appealing to the landlords to to get the work done. So, if in Middlebury, let's say there's, you know couple of thousand homes or 1,500 mm -hmm. homes that really could benefit from this. How would you market this and make advances in a town like Middlebury? Well, um, I love a marketing question. What we do, the, the reason, the way we've always done business is one-on-one -on -one with, our, with our clients. Our clients, um, we, we usually hear, of, and, and this is from our early history, uh, we usually hear about a household that needs some assistance through a town clerk or through a neighbor or through a child who's trying to help, you know, an, an elderly parent or something like that. Or, you know, they'll come directly to us. But we know, we've always known in our bones that um, it takes it takes a one-on-one -on -one connection to explain these things, and it we were convinced when we were first doing, you know, early on we were doing efficiency, that um, it took a trusted source to talk to a household, to talk them into doing this. So it's always been our marketing principles have always been this one-on-one, -on -one. and the way we started, for example, was in Shrewsbury. Um, the Conservation Commission, which is one of those volunteer groups, you know, it could be the nursery school, it could be anywhere, but it's one of those active commer um, community groups. And they had said that 
this was the year they were going to dedicate to energy efficiency. One year they did trees, one year they did stone walls, and this year they were going to do energy. So they, uh, they asked if they could help us, and uh, indeed they could. So I think five of them phoned every household in Shrewsbury. <laughs> we had a phone-a-thon. We provided the pizza and the script and, and the offices and the fun, but they called every household in Shrewsbury and said, we've got this deal and you should really do it. And they, they picked the people they knew and called them. And then if, they did, if we didn't get through the whole list that night, you know, they, they followed through with calling their people. Or So, th and Shrewsbury has, um, I think they, ha they are close to 5% of the town has finished a retrofit as a result. And I think the statewide uptake and I think the national uptake is less than 1%. So 5% of the town, it, doesn't, it still doesn't sound like a lot, but 5% of the town has already done it, and it's because they heard about it from a friend. That's our marketing technique. And it's harder to do in a big community, but it can be done. And, you know, we have a lot of marketing materials, and I think we've left some brochures out. We have all the materials. We have posters on the bus, and we have a television show that you know, kind of highlights the town competition that we have running. We're doing everything we possibly can, but our marketing materials sort of go around behind that one-on-one -on -one approach and that one-on-one -on -one communication. It is labor intensive, and it is, but it's, I will say, you know, we're, we're doing this whole project with a staff of four and a half. Um, the, um, the volunteers in each town and the energy champions and the various ways that each works. We have a competition going. Um, at the end of May, we'll, we have two prizes going to the towns, one with the highest percentage of participants in the town and the other to the highest energy savings that's accomplished by the town. And there are four towns that are really in the running. <laughs> and they're really going for the, and they've, they've you know, they've got, Somebody said, um, Marcy is, what did she, well, she's, I forget, anyway, she's, she's a locomotive um, driving the train, and somebody said sometimes she goes off the tracks because she's so enthusiastic about it. But, you know, it's likely that Mount Holly will beat Shrewsbury. But not if I can help it, because I live in Shrewsbury. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Ludi? Thank you very much, Ludie. That was really very informative.